Hello everyone. My name is Sandra Inach and I'm going to present you the work entitled Quantifying Electro-Optical Crosstalk in White OLED Color Filter Displays. The work that I'm presenting today was actually performed by Oliver Chu, who did his master thesis last year at Fluxen. You can also find a short description about this topic in our scientific blog on our website. Today's smartphone, TV and other daily life applications are already dominated by the OLED displays. Those displays are also attractive for newer devices such as micro displays or VR applications. For these re high resolution applications, the pixels and distance between them need to shrink in size. Ideally, this will lead to an increased acuity of the picture. However, if the pixel density is increased, a phenomenon which is called crosstalk can occur more frequently. Crosstalk will reduce the contrast ratio and hamper the color gamut of the display. Therefore, we should have a better understanding of this effect and analyze how we can reduce it effectively. Let us first look at the two most frequently used display technologies. The primary colors can be generated either by using directly red, green and blue OLED pixels or by a common white OLED whose light is filtered by three color filters. Both technologies have their advantages and disadvantages. Here we focus only on potential crosstalk aspects. The RGB OLED display can suffer from electrical crosstalk due to current leakage through common layers. In white OLED, color filter displays, this effect can also occur. Additionally, this type of devices can also suffer from optical crosstalk if light from one pixel is leaking through the color filter of an adjacent pixel. Today we will focus on the white OLED plus color filter application and analyze quantitatively both electrical and optical crosstalk using electro-optical simulations. In the work that we are presenting today, we make use of our simulation software LAOS. LAOS 3 modules can be used to simulate various electrical, thermal and optical effects in large area devices such as displays and lighting panels. As we focus on crosstalk, we will make use of the electrical and the optical module. We will first focus only on optical crosstalk. We use a similar structure as presented by Lee and co-workers. In order to mimic the full display, we simulate the smallest repeating unit, which consists of four pixels, red, green, blue, and white, and use periodic boundary conditions. The pixel and color filter layout is input as interface geometry on the top right, and the PDL structure between the pixels is stored in the topography information. Further input is required for each interface. We have to provide the optical properties of the different color filters, as well as the white OLED emission spectrum as a function of emission angle. With this, we are ready to start our simulation. Rays are launched from the addressed green pixel, which is here highlighted in yellow, and we follow the trajectories of rays throughout the stack. In the end, Laos analyzes which rays exit the color filter plane, through which xy position, and with which angle phi and theta, with respect to the surface normal. We analyze the light intensity that exits the color filter plane to the top in any angular direction. This information is shown in the xy intensity map. What we do is now simply to integrate all the light that exits the non-addressed pixels, for example, the upper right white one, and divided by the light that exits the addressed pixel, which is here, the bottom right green one. Furthermore, we analyze the far field color in order to detect the potential color gamut decrease due to crosstalk. We start with a reference structure that is defined by the distance between the OLED and the color filter plane, the slope of the PDL, the refractive index of the filler material, and the orientation of the emitting dipoles. One by one, we sweep each parameter while keeping the others fixed. 
and we analyze the optical crosstalk. Let's first have a look at the white OLED color filter distance. Here we see the XY plots of intensity and color as a function of distance between the OLEDs and the color filters. We can clearly see more light emission from the white pixel if the distance D is increased. This is not really surprising. Light emission at a specific angle can reach the neighboring pixels if D is large, whereas if it is blocked if D is small. Let us look at a more interesting variation. Here we see again the XY plots of intensity and color as a function of the angle between the PDL and the OLED pixel, as sketched above. The crosstalk can be seen predominantly at the edges of the neighboring pixels. When we look at the crosstalk indices, we see that interestingly, the crosstalk is highest for a slope of 45 to 60 degrees, whereas it completely vanishes for a flat or vertical PDL structure. In this small sketch, we try to explain this behavior with one specific ray for each structure. For the flat situations, rays that are emitted with an angle above the total internal reflection angle between encapsulation material, color filter, and air are back reflected from the filters multiple times until they eventually get absorbed by the matrix. If the walls are present, here sketched for 60 degrees, Emitted light can change the angle of travel with respect to the display normal if it is hitting the PDL. After multiple refractions, it can eventually exit the display through the wrong color filter, which leads to crosstalk. Multiple reflections can also occur in the case of steep walls. But as for the flat case, the light would be confined within the layer in between the OLED and the color filter. In summary, we see that the OLED color filter distance has the strongest effect on the optical crosstalk. The PTL slope should avoid angles in the range between 45 and 60 degrees. The refractive index, which we did not show in detail, should also be considered. For our situation, it seemed favorable to use a low refractive index material. The amateur orientation in the OLED did affect the overall emission, but did not have a negligible effect on the crosstalk index. In future studies, we could also consider the effect of the color filter topography or differently shaped PDLs. In the final two slides, we also want to present you the effect of both electrical and optical leakage together, as this is, of course, the more realistic scenario. We did this sequentially. First, the current through each OLED pixel was analyzed, considering the lateral resistivity of common layers. Next, the current on each pixel was used as a source for the optical calculation. This means that due to current leakage, we will also have a certain light emission from the OLED below the red and blue filters. Overall, this allows us to analyze the light emission on top of the color filter plane, which thus includes both electrical and optical effects. We vary the applied voltage on the green pixel pixel to mimic something like an IV ramp. At low voltages, we can see that not only the green pixel is emitting, but also all the others have a considerable relative light emission. With increasing voltage, this effect vanishes, which means that the overall crosstalk cross becomes less important. This is also what we see in the color diagram. With increasing voltage, the color points move closer and closer to the pure green color that could be achieved by the employed white OLED with color green filter. For low light intensity applications, the color gamut would thus be considerably hampered. In the simulation, we can easily distinguish between electrical and optical contributions. This analysis is shown on the bottom left. The overall crosstalk shown in the green is composed of electrical and optical contributions. The optical contributions does not depend on the applied voltage, and as the electrical crosstalk decreases with voltage, there is a crossing point at around 7.4 volts where the optical leakage dominates the overall crosstalk. 
In conclusion, we have shown you how current and light leakage is analyzed in white OLED color filter display structure. The effect of material and topological parameters on the optical pixel crosstalk has been quantified. And in the end, we have also shown you an example where we combined electrical and optical crosstalk effects. Finally, I would like to thank the people that contributed to this work, especially Oliver Chu that carried out this work during his master's thesis, but also our software engineer Roman Hirstand for the implementation in the commercial software laws. If you, if you would also like to test the functionality of the software, contact us for free evaluation. And don't forget to visit the blog post to read through the story again. Thank you for your attention.